Hello. I spoke recently about the TTIP, or Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. Towards the end of that talk, I mentioned how the food we buy may change as a result of the TTIP agreement, with potentially substandard or indeed potentially harmful foods entering the EU from the USA. I'd like to expand on that topic today, in particular to look at the farming industry and the health hazards that TTIP could pose. I'd like to start, however, by looking at a slightly different um, topic, which is related to the issue of meat eating. Nowadays, if you're feeling ill, you go to the doctor, and very often the doctor will prescribe some antibiotics for you. For example, penicillin or amoxicillin to treat skin or respiratory infections. Um, another one is, uh, I can't actually say it, ce cephalos cephalosporins, um, which are used to treat uh, a, a lot of infections um, and they're more effective for treating more serious infections than the previously mentioned penicillin. Nowadays, however, doctors are finding that these antibiotics are becoming less effective as time passes. That is because the infections are getting stronger and more resistant to the antibiotics. Uh, this situation is normal, actually, um, but the problem is getting worse more quickly. And some, research, some researchers, sorry, uh, some researchers believe that within 30 or 40 years, the current antibiotics will be relatively useless against infections that are currently not life-threatening. Hence, a small infection in 40 years' time would be incredibly serious and might probably kill you unless new or stronger antibiotics are developed. Um, how does this relate to TTIP and the topic of my talk, which is the TTIP impact on the food that we eat? I'll try to explain, you see. Traditional farming methods have changed from what you might imagine with a, let's say, a happy cow in a field, chewing grass all day before wandering off to the cow shed to be milked. Nowadays, cows are fed a particular diet depending on whether they are being raised for meat or for milk. Cows that are raised for meat are fed a, a cocktail of antibiotics to help them uh, stay healthy and growth hormones to help them grow quickly. And these antibiotics and growth hormones are a major reason why the antibiotics used on humans are becoming less effective. Our bodies, assuming of course that you eat meat, are sort of secondary consumers of the antibiotics used on cows. As we are consuming these second-hand antibiotics, when they're not helping us to overcome illness, the human body gets used to having the antibiotics in the body. So when we do need to take an antibiotic for medical purposes, they are less effective. I'm just trying to think how I can put this in a, a more simple way. Um, I'll go with alcohol. Yes, it's a little bit like drinking alcohol. If you have never drunk alcohol before and go out for a big night of drinking with your friends, you'll probably find that after two or three drinks, you feel drunk. If, on the other hand, you are a regular drinker, you'll find that it takes five or six, maybe more drinks, to make you feel drunk. The reason for that is that the body adapts to what you put in it, so that over time you need more to make the same difference. And it's the same with antibiotics, because people consume them more often through the doctor and through the food they eat, these antibiotics become less effective at what they do. 
so more or stronger versions are required. Um, if you come across this idea, you might hear the term superbug um, in relation to that. Now, TTIP seeks to harmonize the regulations between the US and the EU. So the EU may have to accept the American way of farming, which is very much geared towards the higher use of antibiotics and growth hormones, whereas the EU has tried very hard to limit the use of these. As I mentioned last week, some of these growth hormones have been linked to cancer. So I hope that you can see the, uh, the potential negative health implications of this TTIP agreement. As a second example, we'll look at crops. Um, you live in the city now, but if you travel through the countryside, perhaps by train, particularly in the summer, you'll pass by many fields that are full of different crops, wheat, corn, maize, etc, etc. Some of these can look quite beautiful. Um, I cycle past fields of rapeseed every day, which has a yellow flower. So I see whole fields that are a sea of yellow waving nicely in the wind. It's very pleasing. However, a, a farmer needs to ensure that as much of the crop that they plant grows successfully uh, without being eaten by pests like insects. Hence, farmers spray their crops with pesticides which stop the insects from eating the crops. Now, in the USA, pesticide use is much more widespread than in the EU. The effect of these uh, pesticides, the chemicals, is not really fully understood, but we do know at the very least that these chemicals eventually end up in rivers and can damage fish stocks. So it's likely that they are not exactly useful to humans. In addition to that, many pesticides have other undesirable effects, uh, one of which is on bees. Now bees, as you know, produce honey, but they do not only do that. In order to produce honey, bees pollinate plants and flowers. In fact, um, it's estimated that a third of all the food humans eat requires pollination by bees. So when the bee population goes down, as it is dramatically in some areas, it results in much less pollination of plants, which can reduce the amount of food produced. <clears throat> I should uh, add here that pesticides are not the only reason for declining bee populations. More severe weather in wintertime can wipe out whole colonies of bees. Severe weather is probably due to climate change, but that's a whole different topic, so we, we won't touch on that. My point here is that pesticides to keep crops alive and growing are not good for the bees which pollinate other crops as well as flowers. In the US, the use of pesticides is much more widespread than in the EU. So if this TTIP agreement results in the more widespread use of pesticides in the EU, then we may see more of the crops that are not pollinated by bees, and they'll be available more cheaply. But we may also see uh, much less of the food from crops that require bees because there will be fewer bees. To conclude then, um, I've outlined two specific areas of agriculture, namely cattle farming and crop farming, where many experts are worried that TTIP will create a problem not only for people's health uh, but also with the types of food we eat. Uh, there is a saying that nature always finds a way. It seems to me though that nature cannot keep up with the speed of change in today's world, so it might not find a way in this instance. Thank you very much, that's all for today.